Good evening. <coughs> Here in America, it is the Roman Catholic holiday uh, called Columbus Day. Don't worry, I'm not going to go off on that. I thought the Lord, I thought I thought of doing a video on Columbus Day of just how stupid it is, but uh, the Lord didn't want me doing that. So, but it is 10:43 p.m. my time here, and um, <laughs> this is one of these videos that. Um, I'm I am supposed to do at the moment so get your authorized version of the scriptures the King James scriptures the true and real scriptures and turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to first Kings first Kings chapter 20 <clears throat> First Kings chapter 20. First Kings chapter 20. Very quickly, this has to do with King Ahab. King Ahab was a very wicked king. But you if you were to read in 1 Kings chapter 19, and look into the telling of Naboth's vineyard, you will learn that King Ahab pretty much was a whipped man, because behind the scenes, his wife Jezebel pretty much ran things. And Jezebel, of course, is a type of the Roman Catholic Church in every way and also a type of the alpha female the feminazis that are rule are coming to power in a way throughout the world mm. it's not gonna last <laughs> it was never in Satan didn't establish feminism in order to make it last. But anyway, <clears throat> First Kings chapter 20. And Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, gathered all his hosts together. And there were thirty and two kings with him, and horses, and chariots. And he went up and besieged Samaria and warred against it. And he sent messengers to Ahab, king of Israel, into the city, <coughs> and said unto him, Thus saith Ben-Hadad, Thy silver and thy gold is mine, thy wives also and thy children, even the goodliest, are mine. Ben-Hadad is like, It's all mine. By what right? Just because he could. Verse 4, And the king of Israel answered and said, My lord, O king, according to thy saying, I am thine, and all that I have. And the messengers came again, and said, Thus speaketh Ben-Hadad, saying, Although I have sent unto thee, saying, Thou shalt deliver me thy silver and thy gold, and thy wives and thy children. Yet I will send my servants unto thee tomorrow, about this time, and they shall search thine house, and the houses of thy servants, and it shall be, that whatsoever is pleasant in thine eyes, they shall put it in their hand, and take it away. Skin for skin, yea, all that, hath a, all that a man hath shall he give for his life. But touch now his bones and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. That's in the book of uh, Job, chapter 2. You go find that on your own time, okay? <clears throat> so notice this. King Ben-Hadad 
sent for what? The silver and gold, his wives and his children, touching him. And verse 6, Yet I will send my servants unto thee tomorrow about this time, and they shall search thine house and the houses of thy servants. And it shall be that whatsoever is pleasant in thine eyes, they shall put it in their hand and take it away. Of thy servants. Everybody else. You have to remember, too, King Ahab was hardly a godly king. No. No, he was not. No. He was, a, he was if anything, a cursed king. You read 1 Kings chapter 22, and need I say any more. But let's continue. Then the king of Israel called all the elders of the land and said, Mark, I pray you, and see how this man seeketh mischief. Seeketh mischief. For he sent unto me for my wives, and for my children, and for my silver, and for my gold, and I denied him not. Okay, that wasn't enough. King Ben-Hadad was seeking mischief because he said in verse 6, Yet I will send my servants unto, yet I will send my servants unto thee tomorrow about this time, and they shall search thine house and the houses of thy servants, and it shall be that whatsoever is pleasant in thine eyes, they shall put it in their hand and take it away. Seeking mischief. Verse 8. Let's pick up where we left off. And all the elders and all the people said unto him, Hearken not unto him, nor consent. Wherefore he said unto the messengers of Ben-Hadad, Tell my lord the king, All that thou didst send for to thy servant at the first I will do. But this thing I may not do. And the messengers departed and brought him word again. And Ben-Hadad sent unto him and said, The gods, little g, the gods, do so unto me, and more also. If the dust of Samaria shall suffice for handfuls for all the people that follow me. And the king of Israel answered and said, Tell him. Let not him that girdeth on his harness boast himself as he that putteth it off. In other words, uh, don't pat yourself on the back. Don't, uh, don't think you won before you even played the game. <clears throat> and it came to pass... When Ben-Hadad heard this message, as he was drinking, he and the kings in the pavilions, that he said unto his servants, Set yourselves in array. And they set themselves in array against the city. And behold, there came a prophet unto Ahab, king of Israel, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Hast thou seen all this great multitude? Behold, I will deliver it into thine hand this day, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Now, King Ahab was a wicked, dare I say, cursed king. He had Jezebel as his wife. What more need I to say, okay? <clears throat> but, this happened unto him. And the Lord sent a prophet unto him. Okay? Did you did you read that verse with me, of course, right? Okay. The Lord sent a prophet unto Ahab. Again, let's reread this. And behold, there came a prophet unto Ahab, king of Israel, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Hast thou seen all this great multitude? Behold, I will deliver it into thine hand this day, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord. To prove a point. <laughs> See, King Ahab 
this is on the heels of uh, 1 Kings chapter 18, where Elijah killed the prophets of Baal, where the Lord God himself, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, answered with fire on the offering that Elijah uh, put on the altar and dumped a whole bunch of water on it. And yet he answered by fire and the people said, the Lord, he is the God, the Lord, he is the God. Then came rain. And then a uh, whipped little Ahab boy went and tells his wife, Jezebel, and she threatens uh, Elijah. And unfortunately, Elijah gets a little uh, scared and runs off. Okay? The point is, here is an ungodly king. And the Lord is going to, not for his sake, but for the people's sake, use this ungodly king. Let's continue. And Ahab said, By whom? And he said, Thus saith the Lord, even by the young men of the princes of the provinces. Then he said, Who shall order the battle? And he answered, Thou. Then he numbered the young men of the princes of the provinces. And they were 232, and after them he numbered all the people, even all the children of Israel being 7,000. And they went out at noon, but Ben-Hadad was drinking himself drunk in the pavilions, he and the kings, the thirty and two kings that helped him. And the young men of the provinces and, ah, and the young men of the princes of the provinces went out first, and Ben-Hadad sent over. And they told him, saying, There are men come out of Samaria. <clears throat> and he said, Whether they be come out for peace, take them alive, or whether they come out for war, take them alive. See, Ben Hadad was seeking mischief. So these young men of the princes of the provinces came out of the city, and the army which followed them. And they slew every one his man, and the Syrians fled, and Israel pursued them. And Ben Hadad the king of, uh, of uh, and Ben Hadad the king of Syria escaped on an horse with the horsemen. And the king of Israel went out and smote the horses and chariots and slew the Syrians with a great slaughter. Now check this out. And the prophet came to the king of Israel. Notice something with this. It was the first wave. And the prophet came to the king of Israel and said unto him, Go, strengthen thyself and mark, and see what thou doest. For at the return of the year the king of Syria will come up against thee. And the servants of the king of Syria said unto him, Check this out. Their gods are gods of the hills. Therefore, they were stronger than we. But let us fight against them in the plain, and surely we shall be stronger than they. Yeah, get a load of that one. Their gods are the gods of the hills, not a god of the plain. A god who would... Uh, the Syrians, the, their God can only do certain things. Limiting the Holy One of Israel. <clears throat> Verse 24, And do this thing, take the kings away, every man out of his place, and put captains in their rooms, and number thee an army like the army that thou hast lost, horse for horse, and chariot for chariot. And we will fight against them in the plain, and surely we shall be stronger than they. And he hearkened unto their voice, and did so. And it came to pass at the return of the year that Ben-Hadad numbered the Syrians, and went up to Aphek to fight against Israel. And the children of Israel were numbered, and were all present, and went against them. And the children of Israel pitched... Oops. And 
when the children of Israel pitched before them like two little flocks of kids, but the Syrians filled the country. They were, they were outnumbered. And there came a man of God and spake unto the king of Israel and said, Thus saith the Lord, because the Syrians have said, The Lord is God of the hills, but he is not God of the valleys. Uh, note here the capital G, God, whereas in verse 23, their gods, little g, you know what I said? <clears throat> Back to verse 23. And there came a man of God and spake unto the king of Israel and said, Thus saith the Lord, because the Syrians have said, The Lord is God of the hills, but he is not God of the valleys. Therefore will I deliver all this great multitude into thine hand, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Not for Ahab's sake, absolutely not, because Ahab was a wicked, cursed king. Absolutely. But for his name's sake, that and ye shall know that I am the Lord. And they pitched one over against the other seven days. And so it was that in the seventh day the battle was joined, and the children of Israel slew of the Syrians and hundred thousand footmen in one day. But the rest fled to Aphek, into the city. And there a wall fell upon twenty and seven thousand of the men that were left. And Ben-Hadad fled, and came into the city into an inner chamber. And his servants said unto him, Behold now, we have heard that the kings of the house of Israel are merciful kings. Let us, I pray thee, put sackcloth on our loins and ropes upon our heads, and go out to the king of Israel. For adventure he will save thy life. So they girded sackcloth on their loins, and put ropes on their heads, and came to the king of Israel, and said, Thy servant Ben-Hadad saith, I pray thee, let me live. And he said, And he said, Is he yet alive? He is my brother. Oh, boy. Earlier, Ben-Hadad was seeking mischief by taking his gold, his silver, his wives, and his children, and then he wanted to come back and take every pleasant thing away from not only King Ahab and his servants, and that made King Ahab go like, ah, we're not doing this, because the people counseled him, okay? And the Lord said, uh, you're going to go fight against these guys, and guess what, you're going to whoop them. And Ahab's like, well, who's going to do that? Thou. But yet, he calls him his brother. Let's continue. Now the men did diligently observe what uh, now the men did diligently observe whatever whether anything would come from him, and did hastily catch it. And they said, Thy brother Ben Hadad. Then he said, Go ye, bring him. Then Ben Hadad came forth to him, and he caused him to come up into the chariot. And Ben-Hadad said unto him, The cities which my father took from the, thy father I will restore, and thou shalt make streets for thee in Damascus, as my father made in Samaria. Then said Ahab, I will send thee away with this covenant. So he made a covenant with him and sent him away. The enemy of your enemy is your friend, huh? Here he made a covenant with his enemy, one who sought mischief, <laughs> sought mischief, insulted the Lord, and yet now he's his brother and they made a covenant together. Uh, the reality is that Ahab and Ben-Hadad were pretty much of the same mind in many ways, weren't they? Weren't they? <clears throat> Verse 35, And a certain man of the sons of the prophets said unto his neighbor 
In the word of the Lord, smite me, I pray thee. And the man refused to smite him. Then said he unto him, Because thou hast not obeyed the voice of the Lord, behold, as soon as thou art departed from me, a lion shall slay thee. And as soon as he was departed from him, a lion found him and slew him. Get a load of that. But then he found another man and said, Smite me, I pray thee. And the man smote him, so that in smiting he wounded him. <laughs> I like the picture in verse 37 that this individual who did finally smite the prophet, this uh, man of God or whatever, this um, um, this prophet, that he heard about what happened the first time. And he's like, and this guy was like, whoa, boom, <laughs> like without hesitation, you know. <laughs> but let's continue. So the prophet departed and waited for the king by the way and disguised himself with ashes upon his face. And as the king passed by, he cried unto the king, and he said, Thy servant went out into the midst of the battle, and, behold, a man turned aside, and brought a man unto me, and said, Keep this man, if by any means he be missing, then shall thy life be for his life, or else thou shalt pay a talent of silver. And as thy servant was busy here and there, he was gone. And the king of Israel said unto him, So shall thy judgment be, thy, thyself hast declared it. You get this uh, impression that Ahab is walking into a trap in a way. And he hasted and took the ashes away from his face. And the king of Israel discerned him that he was of the prophets. And he said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Because thou hast let go out of thy hand a man whom I appointed to utter destruction, therefore thy life shall go for his life, and thy people for his people. And the king of Israel went to his house, heavy and displeased, and came to Samaria. You know, people, my American countrymen, especially, the selections are just around the corner. America has gone past the point of no return. America cannot be righted. Okay? America is set for destruction. America cannot go back because America would have to repent of its abortion, murder, its, its pornography, its corruption, its dependence on other nations other than we ourselves. Okay? And we can go on and on and on. America's set for destruction. It is an it is an inevitability. Okay. You have to understand that. And some of you think that by voting in this guy or this woman is going to make a difference. Look at verse 42. And he said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, because thou hast let go out of thy hand a man whom I appointed for utter destruction. Therefore thy life shall go for his life and thy people for his people. Appointed to utter destruction. And when you look back at verse 7, Then the king of Israel called all the elders of the land and said, Mark, I pray you, and see how this man seeketh mischief. For he sent unto me for my wives, and for my children, and for my silver, and for my gold, and I denied him not. And all the elders and all the people said unto him, Hearken not unto him, nor consent. Okay. 
The Jesuits seek mischief to destroy our nation, and they have almost succeeded. Because what have they done? They have taken away the gold and silver and given us fiat, fake currency, and fictitious credit. The wives and the children, feminism, a generation that doth not bless their uh, mother and curse their father. I just paraphrased that and got that all messed up. Excuse me. And they also want to come in to the servants' houses and take everything from us. And then you might point out about, well, here Ahab, you know, and you, you twits who think that Trump is this great white horse knight or whatever, you're insane, okay? Like to say, well, see, you, you even said Ahab was a cursed king, an ungodly king, but God still used him. Yeah, 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 he did for his own glory, not for Ahab's glory, for his own glory, because what did the Syrians say? Okay, verse 23. And the servants of the king of Syria said unto them, Their gods are gods of the hills, therefore they were stronger than we. But let us fight against them in the plain, and surely we shall be stronger than they. And then in verse 28. And there came a man of God and spake unto the king of Israel and said, Thus saith the Lord, because the Syrians have said, Thy God have said, the, God, the Lord is God of the hills, but he is not God of the valleys. Therefore will I deliver all this great multitude into thine hand, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. <clears throat> Look at verse 13. And behold, there came a prophet unto Ahab, king of Israel, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Hast thou seen all this great multitude? Behold, I will deliver it into thine hand this day, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. People do not know who the Lord is. A lot of these Christians think they know who the Lord is. They don't know who the Lord is. The God of the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And of course, look what happened because Ahab lets this guy go who is seeking mischief. Verse 42, and he said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, because thou hast let go out of thy hand a man whom I appointed to utter destruction, therefore thy life shall go for his life, and thy people for his people. There's nothing you're going to be able to do to stop what's coming to our country, my American countrymen. And you of other nations, you know as well, you're not going to stop this. You're not going to stop it. Because this world is appointed for utter destruction. It's called the time of Jacob's trouble. The seven year period where God pours out his wrath upon the earth. The flood lasted 40 days and 40 nights. Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed like that. Seven years, God is going to be pouring his wrath upon this earth. And we, the church of the living God, all we can do is Get out there and warn the people. Because doors are closing, 
but they're not closed yet. Yet. Because we are going to the Church of the Living God, we are going to be resurrected, caught up for the time of Jacob's trouble. That's coming rapidly. You're not going to stop this. Trump gets in or stays in, or he loses and he refuses to step down. You're not going to stop this. You, my American countrymen, are not going to vote in anybody who's going to change anything because the Jesuits seek mischief to destroy us. Ever since the Council of Verona, And they have just about fulfilled their plans. Psalm 9. Psalm 9. Psalm 9. <clears throat> I will praise thee, O Lord. With my whole heart I will shew forth all thy marvelous works. Church of the Living God. Right there. Okay? Impending doom is coming. We're not going to stop it, obviously. The only one who's going to stop it is the Lord. And that happens when we come back, when we come down with him at his second coming, when he establishes the millennial kingdom. Okay? But right there, I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will shew forth all thy marvelous works. His marvelous works. That Christ Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, that he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Beg your pardon. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. And that you are saved by grace through faith. Repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And that you call upon the name of the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. When mine enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish at thy presence. Oh, and they will. But this is their time. This is their hour. And the power of darkness. They get to frolic for their little time here. But in the end, you lose. And the Lord Jesus Christ wins. God our Father. For thou hast maintained my right and my cause. Thou sattest in the throne, judging right. <clears throat> See, those of you who call yourselves Christians and are being fed diluted garbage from these church buildings, guess what? The big fluffy teddy bear who you think Jesus Christ is, that's blasphemy. For thou hast maintained my right and my cause, thou saddest in the throne judging right. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, judges right. And for thou hast maintained my right and my cause. He maintains we, the church of the living God. He provides for all our needs. Not our greeds, our needs. 
Thou hast rebuked the heathen, thou hast destroyed the wicked, thou hast put out their name forever and ever. O thou enemy, destructions are come to a perpetual end, and thou hast destroyed cities, their memorial is perished with them. But the Lord shall endure forever. He hath prepared his throne for judgment. And he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. What's coming to America, what's coming to your nation, is more than well deserved. And as an American in America, we as Americans have reaped what we sowed. As a nation, we are getting more, more we are we, we are entitled to far more than what is going to be coming upon us. America and um, the American people are getting what they deserve. Sound a little disassociative, don't I? Yeah, because this isn't it. This is not my home. We, the Church of the Living God, are seated together with Christ in heavenly places. This isn't it. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. A refuge for the oppressed. Church of the Living God is very soon going to start uh, feeling incredible persecution coming very soon. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Hold your place here and go to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 4. <clears throat> Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Now let's read that verse again. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Acts chapter 4, verses 10 and 12. Be it known unto you all and all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here, stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And of course, of course, Philippians. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Work with me, fingers. Come on. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 12. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship in the Spirit, if any bowels of mer and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each other esteem other better than themselves. Themselves. 
excuse me, but in lowliness of mind, let each, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which, all, which was also in Christ, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. And if you are reading a Bible and not the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, um, yeah, you're going to see a very, very big difference in your Bible than what's written here in the scriptures. Don't you? Let's continue. But made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. <clears throat> Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out. Doesn't mean work for. Work out. Work out. Okay? Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. <clears throat> Go back to Psalm 9. Verse 10 again, And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Sing praises to the Lord which dwelleth in Zion. Declare among the people his doings. Declare among the people his doings. This is going to be fulfilled when our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is sitting on the throne in Jerusalem, ruling and reigning. Okay? But, there again, declare among the people his doings. Oh, that Christ Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That repentance, being broken of yourself, contrite, godly sorrow, you come to him as a broken, contrite sinner. Sorry for what you have done to the Lord. Sorry. Agonizing. Over your wretchedness. And that you have sinned against the Lord. Trust him. For what he did for you on the cross. And humble yourself. And call upon the name of the Lord. Because someone who. Um, fights. Or protests. Against. Calling on the name of the Lord. To be saved. There's no humility in them. And you tell him I said so. <clears throat> when the when he maketh inquisition for blood, he remembereth them. He forgetteth not the cry of the humble. I should have just shut up. I beg your pardon. <laughs> have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider my trouble which I suffer of them that hate me. Thou that liftest me up from the gates of death, that I may shew forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion, I will rejoice in thy salvation. 
The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made. In the net which they hid is their own foot taken. This whole thing that the Jesuits are concocting and Satan's seven-year kingdom, it's not going to last seven years because it's going to fall apart almost instantly. Okay? The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made. In the net which they hid is their own foot taken. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executeth. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands, Higieon Shilah. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail, let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. Selah. See, when you go along with this stuff, you're going along with something that is eventually going to be destroyed. You're consenting onto it. You're trying to spare something that the Lord has appointed for devastation. And you need to realize that. And that's for any nation. That's for any nation. This is coming to an end. And we, the Church of the Living God, we're getting caught, uh, caught up very soon. And then all these twits are going to be left here and easily controlled as if by a marionette. Go to Psalm 50 now. Psalm 50. All the nations that forget God. Oh, we believe in Jesus. Yeah, the devils also believe and tremble. No repentance. No brokenness of yourself. No sorrow for what you have done. And especially what you have done unto the Lord and calling as a work. Are you creating you, you, you guys? You guys, your arrogance precedes you. Psalm 50. The mighty God, even the Lord, has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun unto the going down thereof. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God hath shined. O God, our God shall come and shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him. Hello, future prophecy. And it shall be very temptuous round about him. He shall call to the heavens from above. And to the earth that he may judge his people. His people there is a direct reference to the Jews. Instruction and righteousness, of course, we are looking at. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Gather my saints together unto me. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Oh, we don't have the time to go through what sacrifices myself and even my wife have done in order to stand, to stand for the scriptures, to stand for our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. 
We have counted the cost. What about you? A covenant of sacrifice. That you will align your life in accordance with the scriptures. And be not like the world. And don't conform onto it. You want to be a part, you want to go down on a sinking ship? We're not. And the heavens shall declare his, his righteousness, for God is judge himself. Shilah. Hear, O my people, and I will speak, O Israel. That's who he's referring to. Destruction and righteousness. Okay? And I will testify against thee. I am God, even thy God. I will not reprove thee for thy sacrifices or thy burnt offerings to have been continually before me. God remembers. Our labor is not in vain, brother, sister. Don't forget that. Don't you forget that doesn't matter what it is call to the Lord and doing the work of the Lord it ain't in vain from the mighty unto the mundane in your eyes okay I will take no bullock out of thy house nor he goats out of thy fold note the contrast of that verse to what we read in first Kings chapter 20 for every beast of the forest is mine and the cattle upon a thousand hills. Remember, Ben Haddad said, Your gold, your silver, your wives, your children, they're mine. And because he's the God of the hills and not of the valleys. And right here, For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. Verse 9 I will take no bullock out of thy house, nor he goats out of thy folds. Verse 11, I know all the fowls of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee, for the world is mine, and the fullness thereof. Will I eat the flesh of bulls, or drink the blood of goats? Offer unto God thanksgiving, and pay thy vows unto the Most High. In all things give thanks. In all things, give thanks. And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee. And thou shalt glorify me. But unto the wicked, God saith, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Seeing thou hatest instruction, and castest my words behind thee. Yea, hath God said. You know, if you're uh, reading a Bible, you're casting his words behind you. <gasps> yeah, yeah. See this? This is the scriptures. It's not a Bible. Oh, it's a, yeah, it's a collection of books, yeah, but it's the scriptures. The authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Perfect. Given by inspiration, inerrant. God's hand was upon this. It still is. And see, the authorized version of the scriptures cut you to the bone, the marrow, to the dividing asunder of joints and marrow. Excuse me. Hebrews 4, verse 12. Look that up on your own time. And there have been many who have been warning you for so long now and you have cast his words behind you. He 
you're going to get what's coming to you. All of you who hate the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Most of all, those of you who think you know him and claim to serve him, but you don't, you serve the Antichrist. You're going to get what's coming to you. When thou sawest the thief, then thou consentest with him, and hast been partaker with adulterers. Thief. These people who, social distancing, closing local businesses, forced vaccinations, the concentration camps, which have been uh, around for quite a while, and now they're starting to make a uh, uh, in the uh, feed or whatever on YouTube I saw. Now they're starting to address it publicly. You need, you, you need to wake up. When thou sawest a thief, thou consentest with him and hast been partaker with adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil and thy tongue framest Frameth deceit. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Though thou, thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one as thyself. But I will reprove thee, and set them in order before thine eyes. You made a God in your own image. The one that you look at in the mirror. My God doesn't judge. My God is okay with everything. My God is okay with rock music. My God wants me to have a Bible that is in my language that I can understand. Like that disgusting, what was that, the mess? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, when God the Father, when God was manifest in the flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, um, he was a man. Yes. Yes. He experienced a lot of the stuff we did. But he never sinned because God cannot sin. He was like us. But there again, he was nothing like us. He was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief like we are. And those of you out there like to picture him as your homeboy Or make him a God of no requirement. Of no terms. Because hey, if it's, you know, just believe, just believe. Wow, there, there's a lot of people then that are going to be caught up, right? Or very few who are left and remain. Now consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver you, or be none to deliver. Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me, and him that ordereth his conversation aright will I shew the salvation of God. Order your conversation aright. Are you seeking him? Truly? Lord, please reveal yourself to me. Shoo me truth. Or are you just going out there? God loves you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
Isaiah 65. <clears throat> Isaiah 65. I am sought of them that ask not, not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, Behold me, behold me, unto a nation that was not called by my name. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, which walketh in a way that was not good, after their own thoughts. Hello, America. Hello, whatever nation you're in. A people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face, that sacrificeth in gardens, and burneth incense upon altars of brick, which remain among the graves, and lodge in the mount monuments, which eat swine's flesh, and broth of abominable things in their vessels, which say, Stand by thyself, come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. These are smoke in my nose, a fire that burneth all the day. Behold, it is written before me, I will not keep silence, but will recompense, even recompense into their bosom. Your iniquities and the iniquities of your fathers together, saith the Lord, which have burned incense upon the mountains and blasphemed me upon the hills. Therefore will I measure their former work into their bosom. Again, I say unto you, my American countrymen, America has gone past the point of no return. The only thing that you can do is seek the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and one saith, destroy it not, for a blessing is in it. So will I do for my servant's sake, that I might not destroy them all. And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob, and out of Judah an inheritor of my mountains. And mine elect shall inherit it, and my servants shall dwell there. And Sharon shall be a flock of folds, a fold of flocks, excuse me. And the valley of Achor, a place for the herds to lie down in, for my people that have sought me. But ye are they that forsake the Lord, that forget my holy mountain, that prepare a table for that troop, and that furnish the drink offering unto that number. Therefore will I number you to the sword, and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. Because when I called, ye did not answer. When I spake, ye did not hear. But did evil before mine eyes, and did choose that wherein I delighted not. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, my servant shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servant shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Behold, my servant shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart, and shall howl for vexation of spirit. And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. For the Lord God shall slay thee, and call his servants by another name. That he who blesseth himself in the earth shall bless himself in the God of truth. And he that sweareth in the earth shall swear by the God of truth. Because the former troubles are forgotten, and because they are hid from mine eyes. Now this, what he is referring to here, is future prophecy uh, for the Millennial Kingdom. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem, and joy in my people, and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her. 
with a voice of crying. There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not, hath not filled his days. For the child shall die an hundred years old, but the sinner being an hundred years old shall be accursed. And they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit, they shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. Like I said, this is future prophecy. Okay. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble. For they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my mountain, saith the Lord. God's judgment is coming upon this nation of America. God's judgment is coming to your nation, wherever you are. God's wrath is coming upon this world soon. You don't have to face it. You don't have to face it. You know what you need to do? You need to repent. You need to repent of your self-righteousness. You need to repent of yourself. You're not good. You cannot save yourself. And you deserve to go where you're going. You need to know that there is only one who can save you. The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who is God the Father. For it says in the scriptures, unless you believe that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. You need to repent of yourself. Get over yourself. Come to the Lord broken and contrite. And trust on him, the man, Christ Jesus, for what he did for you on the cross. And his blood cleanses you from all sin. And here's the hard part for a lot of you. Because it shows the contrition. It shows the brokenness. Call on him. Ask him to save you. Where were your tears when you got saved, so you claim, and you dispute that. Yeah. For those of us who know, true colors have already been shown from a lot of you. Time's almost up, people. You're not going to stop a freight train coming at you by putting gauze in front of it. And that's the best that you can do. Get saved before it's too late. Because time is running out. It's almost midnight. It's almost Tuesday. But, um... I had to do this. May the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, be magnified. That's that's all I care about. Very tired. Anyway, um, that's going to be it for this video. This was not expected to be done, but here it is. So, I love you. And thank you to all of you. Thank you all so very much. You know who you are and we know who you are and the Lord knows who you are and we will see you in the next video
Bye-bye.